Today, our guest is Dave Cohen, a BBC comedy writer, comedian and teacher who's been on the British comedy scene for more than 35 years. A pleasure to, to be with you. We're delighted to have you. So, so the first question is, what does it take for people to learn to write funny? Um, that's a, that's a, that is a, a good question. Uh, because I think people uh, think of it very emotionally and they, they, they think of it as uh, you can't, I can't write comedy. Um, other people think I can write comedy and um, th there is a certain amount of instinct there, true. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, it's almost always it's men who say I can write comedy and women who say I can't write comedy. That's a surprise. Um, no <laughs> <laughs> and um and it's um yeah it, it is a surprise isn't it but it, I, I think that's because um it's about to some extent it is about kind of reveal revealing yourself publicly to uh, to strangers um and that men lack the self-awareness i think to to know that when they are revealing themselves to strangers that strangers aren't necessarily finding them funny whereas women <laughs> generally are, are slightly better at picking up uh, social signals and nuance. Um, but I think it's a really, um, I, I, I think anybody who can, if you can write, you can write comedy. That's my uh, belief. Because um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, nothing has changed really since uh, Aristotle, who wrote some um, 2003... <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he's uh, this guy that I know. He's a uh, Greek guy. Um, <laughs> you say great or Greek guy? Yeah. Uh, Greek. Uh, well, both, I suppose. Really, uh, he's a great Greek guy. He was. I mean, how many people uh, have on their CV uh, uh, screenplay guru and zoo zoologist uh, and philosopher? Um, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yes, for 2000 yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But basically, he wrote a book called The Poetics 2,300 years ago. Um, and in it, he describes uh, comedy, drama, and tragedy. And if you read it, you'll see that actually there's not a huge amount to choose between comedy and tragedy. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that there's there's so much uh, that, that belongs in both camps that I think if you know how to write drama if you know how to write tragedy then uh it's not that difficult to imagine how that can be comedy and so so that's that's very encouraging that's great um so so how do you, what's your process when you're writing how do you go about do you write it and it comes out funny or do you have to go back and make it funny I I think my process is probably very similar to the process of people who don't write comedy. If I'm coming up with a new idea, um, I I ask some very uh, basic questions, and and I it's really only in the last year or so that I realised how they're the same questions that drama writers ask. Because last year I was uh, asked to teach a creative writing course, um, and I was very nervous because I thought I had all the comedy credits but I thought how am I going to teach these people drama I've never I've never written a drama in my life and I read lots of books about drama writing and I looked at that looked at how people did their drama and I thought this is this is just what I do you start you you say you know what am I what what am I writing about what what is it about and then the next question is what's it really about you know what 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 are the the kind of underlying features and that's that's the really that's where you really do lots and lots of work what's what's the underlying facts what under who is it about um what is the who is the character or the or say the two or three characters that it's about and um why why am i the right person to write this why can nobody else write this apart from me what unique uh aspects of personality and, and upbringing and all that am i bringing to this and then the last question is why now which is you know what is it about this idea it might be familiar but it's got something else to it i mean the famous uh cliche uh pitch for uh, alien was uh it's jaws only it's set in space and i think you know, <laughs> that's great i i didn't know that that's, that's, that's perfect isn't it it's just yeah. that's familiar and original and 
and I think that's true for drama, comedy, well, it's interesting tragedy. You said about the parallels between tragedy and comedy because I know my favorite comedies are always, always have that element of drama. I mean, if I'm not crying, I'm not laughing. Can you, so what do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's I I grew up with uh, the British uh, audience sitcom and, and, and Americans grew up, of course, with their audience sitcom. And um, that that's always been my favorite uh, form ever since I was a like six, seven years old. I loved those audience sitcoms. And then uh, often what I liked about them was people were being rude or saying silly things or making rude noises or whatever. But then I went, I'd revisit these sitcoms in my, in my teens and twenties and actually find that there's some, they're, they're really kind of, that they're, they're really dealing with harsh subjects and they're, mm -hmm. they're actually, they are deeply tragic. And I mean, a show like uh, Frasier, for instance, is, is, uh, it's very much inspired by the first show that I ever uh, really loved a show called Steptoe and Son. Mm. Um, which yeah. I think was, was re, that was remade as uh, Samford and Son in America, but yeah, wow. um, I grew up watching that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, but but Frasier is actually exactly you know, well, not exactly the same. It's a very it's you know the the, the guy that the son trapped trapped in the house with his father, and uh, it, it, it's 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 got a slightly different tack. The son will never leave because he he uh, he's not his dad manipulates him to stay but also he doesn't have the strength of character to leave and it's and it's tragic you know it is it's a really tragic show um and it was always you you get 20 minutes it's about a half hour long and you'd get 20 25 minutes of laughs 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 and then the last then they get two minutes where it was just this is desperate and then it win yeah. it back two minutes of laughs at the end and so that's kind of been the big the, the biggest influence to me and it, it really that's coming back to what i was saying about things being instinctive that i've all that's instinctively what i've always wanted to write funny 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 shock cry yeah and they all live they all live happily ever after but the difference between comedy and tragedy is that in tragedy uh, at the end of the tragedy uh, the hero dies um at the and in comedy um the hero lives and gets and comes back again next week and makes the same mistakes over and over no growth yes yes they never learn <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes so so before you sit down to write do you read something funny or do you consciously put yourself in a state of yeah. amusedness or not yes i i uh, tickle myself to, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my little oh, stick and tickle yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my just sit down and cry for a long time. Um, yeah. I um, that's a gosh, that's a really interesting question. I think what uh, I do is I, um, I, I I I really really think a lot about the idea before I start writing. Uh, I, 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 I got a character I've got an idea something it, it may be the germ of an idea a character um I mean the the, the show uh, Faulty Towers which I guess I don't you, you know yes, which is the sort familiar. of uh, John Cleese show um and that was um what happened was the Monty Python they were out touring uh in the UK and they stayed at a hotel and uh the the manager of the hotel was really rude obnoxious bloke <laughs> <laughs> and when you're a comedy person you know you don't necessarily go oh here's my idea it's just you store it away yeah. and you've got all this stuff stored away but I think that's true with a, if you're a, a writer of not just of comedy as well uh, and so obviously John Cleese stored it away and gradually over time he kind of created this monster character which obviously had a lot of elements of John Cleese in it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so would you go yeah. as far as keeping a journal of things that have made you laugh or do you not go that far? You just remember them? Um, yes, I do write things down. If a thing comes, I actually, I, I write those sorts of things down a lot less than 
just writing notes and notes and every, I try and just write something every day, not necessarily a creative thing, but I try and write, uh, for instance, I'm, I've got a, a, th a thing that I know I want to write um, with my co-writer for the songs for Horrible Histories. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, at the moment, I, re I, I, I just, I don't know what it is, but I've got enough of a sense of what it is, um, very, very vague sense, so I just sit down and I think about the idea and I I start to kind of watch it in my head. And so I'm watching it on TV and just see what see what comes up and see what makes me laugh. And uh yeah, that that's so you, kind of how it comes. You do a lot of writing also on your own solo, but I know you're in comedy rooms, as they would say, or uh writing rooms. So what's that process? How is it different to write with a group of people or another writer as a person? Well, there, there's probably two things to say about that. The first is I think it's it's quite different in uh, the states to Britain. Uh, it's a, it's it's been part of the American culture for for many years, and so uh, the, the the writing in the, the room in America, which I, I've I've not experienced, but I, I'm aware I'm aware of, and I I think it's because it's, it's you know there's quite quite a quite a lot of people and a big process and it, and it's got a horrible sort of reputation and and again it's one of the reasons why in the past there have been fewer female comedy writers i think than male because it can be a bit of a bear pit and everybody's a everybody's shouting to get their idea in and b you kind of have to accept that sometimes the first thing that you think of and shout out is not going to be funny mm -hmm. and you're going to go and then he says, yes, we'll buy some tomatoes. <laughs> and <laughs> si that. Silence descends on yeah. the room. Yeah. yeah. And you think, oh, ha, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I deliberately said a not funny thing there just to yeah. uh, get that reaction. <laughs> that's <laughs> gruesome. Yes. Uh, and that's. Or you just repeat it again more loud. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. It. That's, yeah. But I think what has happened in both sides uh, of the Atlantic is in recent years, I mean, men have started to finally accept that the kind of the toxic masculine atmosphere is not conducive necessarily to producing the best work. And actually, there's nothing wrong with having women in the room. And, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you say thank you, but yeah, I, honestly, the first record, my, yeah, my first. Really. The first 25 or 30 years that I worked as a comedy writer, and I worked in lots and lots of rooms and I there are barely a, a, a day that I can think of a working day where there was a woman in the room it was always all men don't get and, me going now Dave yeah. this is good you're pressing my buttons yes here. no but well, it's, it's true I mean uh even with the Saturday Night Live I mean that started off with some women but very few until yeah last few Jack yeah and I I mean I used to bang on about this i i was belong to the the uh, writers guild in in the, the british uh, version and uh, was always saying you know why can't we get more women writers in and what used to happen was like a woman would turn up to a comedy uh, writing thing or producers and if they were if they were promising even they didn't have to be great they have, they were like anyone else starting out they were promising and suddenly every producer wanted that person and so that person who was not yet ready to be writing professionally yeah. was suddenly being asked to write and write for this and write for that for that and they they burn out after two years and the self-perpetuating myth would continue uh -huh. uh, you see women women can't write funny yeah. but i'm here today to talk over you two just as i did there <laughs> okay, okay no that's okay <laughs> but but You're to so say relaxed. yes Better to say, okay. women can write comedy. If you can write, you can write comedy, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you for that. And I must make a quick shout out to my my student Ed, who is so funny, just and doesn't have that sort of toxic masculinity at all. I do just have to say that because he's just naturally funny. Everything he writes is funny. I'm. I'm fascinated but um so talking about you've mentioned sitcoms but what about prose writers so books that you've found funny 
or inspirational, which writers would they be? And what do you do with that? Do you break it down word by word, sentence by sentence or not? Again, I think, and uh, this is something uh, very interesting that I found because I, I've written a, uh, a comic novel and I've been reading a lot of uh, funny writers, people who you might consider are called funny writers. I mean, my favorite uh, writers are probably, uh, well, I like um, Joseph Heller's uh, books um, and um, Philip Roth and uh, uh, but you know th these aren't necessarily what you would call big big laugh laugh out loud uh, no. books but th i th um i i think that books have much more space and the luxury of being able to uh have a comedy in them because um you know you're you are telling a big long story that unfolds over 80,000 words or however long it is and probably over a time like one or two years or something and unless it's someone like um what's it called lee child or something you know those those mm -hmm. sort of non-stop action big macho blokes fighting to save the world um you know non-stop action even the most most very active uh, uh stories could can use a bit of light relief so you know at the very least you want something that's a bit of a light interlude uh in, in your if you've got a, a romance or a drama i mean i i i think you know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of comedy in romance and um <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dark comedies I yes yeah I mean, I, I, again, the whole, I think the whole kind of landscape of books, uh, book writing has changed so much really in the last um, 10, 20 years. And a lot of people are kind of writing more to genre now. Um, and I think uh, it's, you can see in the sort of genres in the, the, uh, the they're not ones that I know that well, say science fiction, for instance, or or uh, young adult or romance, but they do. Uh, more and more people are bringing comedy into those uh, books, and um, I, th I think um, the um, that something like somebody like Terry Pratchett, for instance, whose books were they were sort of comedy science fiction, and I think. He was a comedy writer who told stories, but then I think you get other writers, somebody like Philip Roth, I think is a, generally is a storyteller who who uses humor. So uh, it's more of a, so, and I think that's kind of where you get, um, for, for, for people who think I can't write comedy, um, it's possible to uh, look at your dramas and your stories and look at your characters and, see see aspects of characters that aren't necessarily uh the most important part of the story but are something that can tell us a bit more about someone and yeah. actually i find i find one thing that's very useful uh in this situation is to use your uh, roger's thesaurus um and if oh. if you have a character let's say that you know the, the the thing that this character feels about themselves is that they are uh spontaneous and free and easygoing um and if you look up that word uh, spontaneous in the roger's thesaurus you'll find uh words like uh, impulsive and uh you know kind of uh over, over, overreacting and and yes. so yes. that you can make yeah. the same you can make the same person do something yeah. silly yeah. and yes. character that way yeah. we yeah. just time for one more question and then we'll go to our writing prompt so um so pat do you want to give us the the last question yeah okay um and just and i was also going to say anybody who has a dysfunctional family can probably write a lot about funny uh <laughs> things um so what is the one thing that you think aspiring writers should keep in mind the one thing <laughs> Um, one chance at this <laughs> this is going to break many careers and many lives um yes i i would say um uh, obstacles obstacles are fun that's the one thing that i would say uh because all the time we're writing we we so come across example. can you give us an example of what you mean by obstacles so you've got a character and 
they've got a problem uh and they have to find a way to sort it out um and so what are they going to do how are they going to sort this out okay i've got to um i've got to get this um uh book delivered to this house by six o'clock this evening or uh my whole world collapses um now so uh, um our spontaneous person will go hey i'm mr spontaneous or Ms. spontaneous i'm gonna go and just uh knock on the door of the person who lives there and give them the book um but actually you know you can't do that because that's the worst that's the worst possible thing you can do but they're going to go ahead and do that anyway or um they might just think um they might be someone who's more cautious and so rather than just kind of crashing through the barrier they'll kind of move away or they'll work try and work their way around whatever the problem is or then you've got someone who's kind of knows exactly what to do and they'll climb over the obstacle and then they'll but then they'll fall and crash to the mm -hmm. other side so um we tend to think when we tend to see a problem in a plot and uh think that oh gosh you know that's too hard how am i going to sort that and and we, we struggle and struggle to think about it but just come back to your character and get your character to uh how does it, how will your character deal with that problem and you'll you'll find a solution and if you're lucky you'll find a funny solution as well coming yeah. from the character yes That's great great, yeah. great. Yeah. Can we get your writing prompt dave for your for our listeners my writing prompt yeah. uh yes. yeah you must have many from your class uh, um what i'd say is uh, write write every day um but that that doesn't mean write your novel every day necessarily but it means just have the habit of writing every day i don't necessarily mean you know write your thing that you're writing every day because that that can uh that can be a bit a bit of a uh you know that can make you a bit sort of uh desperate and um if you miss a day you get all upset about it but but just getting into the habit of a, a daily routine of writing um if you can make it the same time of day as well that'd be great and it just just to, because that's the sort of thing that you do need if you're writing uh for the long run writing a novel for instance you know you if you're writing your first draft you need to be able to put something down uh write a certain amount every day even when you've got everything else going on around you in the minute, world five minutes you know writers that you know we want like specific directions so <laughs> when you say every day two hours three hours is five minutes enough well i i th i what you can do you know i mean in the time you've got really some some people their lives are so busy you know if you can just take 15 minutes of a day and you want you want to be able to build on that ideally but you know if you can just and even if you're not necessarily writing your thing and you don't know what you want to write then sit down on a blank screen or a blank sheet of paper and write down i don't know what i want to write today and um that kind of you know eventually something will come yeah i shoot for an hour or two but i'll accept 10 minutes yeah, I shoot for at least 10 minutes and I'll accept not writing for a week and then, but I have students I can tell to write every day. <laughs> yes, don't do as I do, do as, do as I, do. I say. <laughs> no, but no, but it does make a big difference because when you have that block of time, if you've been writing even a little bit every day, then you don't have to reacquaint yourself right, you, with what you're working. Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so. yeah. so writing prompt, perhaps something that readers can respond to. Oh, sorry what was that that one you have a writing prompt something that um people can use like dot 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 um ah yes okay um <laughs> right i'm sorry i i um well, i wasn't clear about that. no but the worry. other one was very great ah, right nice. yeah, yeah let me let me think about that i think i would say um it is um i'm going to come back to aristotle and um well, I, I, actually, no, I'll tell you what, the character, your main character, uh, and this is true of comedy and drama and tragedy, uh, that, that every main character is uh, the architect of their own demise. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have always be sure that your character is being proactive. 
in their self sabotage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah. so you tell people to make a list of different things that their characters could do to self-sabotage in a situation or? I think what happens when we get carried away, and it's, I, I do this a lot as well, is that um, you get so interested in the story or interested in the other people around and you forget you've got this main character who is the one who is on the journey. They're doing the stuff. Um, if it's comedy, they are causing bad things to happen um or, or and, and you know kind of in drama as well you know if, a, if when you've got a kind of a thriller or whatever it, it, you, you're always putting that the character is always getting into worse and worse scrapes aren't they until mm -hmm. until you get to that big all is lost moment but you, you mustn't you know they're, they're, there's a certain amount of action that makes that happen but that they the the uh, character must own everything that goes wrong. Um, right. okay. So writers, your prompt from, from Dave Cohen, and um, yeah. he's a famous, famous BBC, card-carrying BBC writer. And he's so actually funny. Treat. So yeah. this is a treat. Even write, though he's write, British, he's funny. I'm sorry. Okay. No kidding. I'm write joking. three to five things that your character or a character could do to self-sabotage themselves that would amuse you, yes. that you think <laughs> And sometime when we have a time for maybe another show, I would love to talk more about the American versus British sitcoms and how America is constant, America, the United States is constantly taking all their ideas from British sitcoms. Americans love to beat themselves up. It's the funniest thing. But we have to wrap yes. it up now. So thank you so much, Dave Cohen, yeah, for joining us. It was a pleasure, an honor. And it really uh -huh. And you can find more information about Dave at his website, which is davecohen.org.uk. That's D-A-V-E-C-O-H-E-N.org.uk. And get his book. And get his book. And so now, go ahead and I Thank dare you. you. Go ahead, everyone. Write something funny. Write I something dare funny. you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. Not too funny. I don't want the competition. <laughs> oh, sorry, but you have it. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you so Thanks much. Lot. Wonderful. Thanks.